So most people don't realize this, but your price is actually a part of your coaching. Your price is part of the accountability that's gonna hold people together. Don't be surprised when they're not showing up to calls, when they're not taking things seriously, when they're not doing their homework and they're just kind of like, oh, they can take it or leave it because it didn't really cost them anything. <laughs> Hey, hey, Courtney Sanders here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to me, I'm a full-time online life and business coach as well as wife and mom. I wear all the hats and do all the things, but I do it because I'm so passionate about helping you turn your success story into a six or even seven figure brand. Now, one of the key ways that you are going to do that is by getting results for your clients. So I talk about this all the time. It sounds obvious, right? But as a coach, word of mouth will spread if you're really good at what you do because you are getting results for people. And so you want to get those testimonials and then people will talk about you and say, oh, I had this amazing experience with this coach and they will share you to your friends and then on and on it goes. In fact, I've had quite a few people who have worked with me over the years because a friend who coached with me told them, you know, about me and they were like, man, I was looking for a business coach and my friend was like, oh, you got to check out Courtney and they came and got them great results as well. And so I wanted to spend time in this video talking about how do you actually get results for your clients? Because I know that that's something that a lot of new and emerging and even some established coaches have a lot of anxiety around. And so if you're wondering, maybe it's been hit or miss in the past, you know, some clients you're like, man, it just connects and I'm able to get them the result, but other clients I can't quite figure out what did I do wrong or what didn't go down correctly in the coaching relationship. You're going to love this video because we're going to get into that right now. All right, the first thing you want to do if you want to make sure that you are getting your clients results is you want to make sure you are coaching on a specific result. This is so huge and I cannot say this enough even as your niche grows and expands. So I started my coaching and life coaching and then it expanded to business coaching. And really I have a brand that talks about personal development, money mindset, you know, business. We're getting into team building and outsourcing. I talk a bit about um, home management as a woman entrepreneur. I'm actually hosting a retreat in South Africa and my husband is gonna be coming and talking to some of the other men about how they can support, you know, their entrepreneurial wives. So my brand in and of itself is kind of expanding into all of these different spheres. But part of how I'm able to get results for my client is any particular coaching program that I am offering, I am making sure that that coaching program is fixed on a very specific result and I'm helping the client get that result. Oftentimes, especially in the life coaching space, especially in the wellness coaching space, anything where it's like kind of broad and nebulous, we might get a client who comes in who's like, oh, I just want help in this area. And we're like, great, I can coach you on that but there's not a clear, tangible, specific result that we're looking to get the person. So if you're a life coach and someone comes to you and they're like, man, I just feel like I'm stuck in life and I just want to you know, get out of this stuckness and figure out what I wanna do with my life, even if they're coming to you looking for that, you will want to do the work to tighten up the specific result. So it's on you as the coach to say, okay, I understand that you are stuck. Maybe let's do some initial consultations to figure out where you are stuck. And then once we identify where you are stuck, then we will spend the duration of our coaching time getting you unstuck from that particular area. So maybe you discover that the, the issue is that they lack self-discipline, which was one of my first training programs. Then you spend the rest of your coaching time helping them achieve tangible self-discipline. So you wanna make sure that you are helping people achieve a specific specific result because if it's too broad, the client doesn't really know if they got the result or not when they're done working with you. And so it might have been fun and they might have enjoyed themselves, but they might be saying to themselves, mm, I don't know if I would refer her or I don't know if I would work with this coach again because I'm not really clear on the result that I got. You never want that to be the case with your clients. So be specific. All right, the second thing that you need to do, which goes along with the first thing that we talked about, is you want to teach from practice, not theory. So part of the reason why some coaches struggle with creating coaching programs that are specific and can help people get a very tangible result is because they're not clear on the result that they have gotten themselves. So I'm, I'm really big, I talk about making sure that you have a result, that is your cred credibility, make sure that you are showcasing your visible victories, because just by thinking through what you personally did in your own practice is going to help Help you come up with a framework that's going to enable you to help somebody else get from point A to point B. But if you're practicing from theory or you're coaching people from theory, meaning you've never done the thing, but you think, you know, I, I learned in a book or I got a certification that teaches me, you know, 
how to coach people, but I've never myself walked through this transformation or gotten this transformation for myself, you're gonna find that almost by default, your coaching is gonna be at a very theoretical level and it's gonna be difficult for people to get very, very specific results. So make sure that whatever it is that you choose to coach on, that you are coaches, coaching on something that you have practice in, not just something that you have theory around. All right, the third thing that you'll need to do, and this is gonna sound counterintuitive, but the best coaches know that this is the case, you'll actually want to teach less, not more in your coaching programs. And this is something that really took me years to understand, in part because I love learning, I geek out on all the different facets of my topic, whether it's in personal development or business, and at, for a long time it felt more generous if I was giving you know my audience more and more information but oftentimes when someone is looking to coach with you they're actually not looking to become the expert on that thing you're looking to become the expert on that thing so they don't want all the information that's going to make them the expert they're just looking to get a specific result so it's your job as the coach to figure out how to take your expertise and all the things that you know and distill it into a framework that the person can implement and get a very specific specific practical result. So you gotta be clear on what is it that they need to know, what is it that they don't need to know, and how can I work with them to make sure that they are implementing this information. Oftentimes that is a game of subtraction, not addition, where you are taking things out of the coaching program because it ultimately confuses your target market or it sends them down rabbit trails and they don't need to be on. And so you really need to learn how to tighten up your coaching program so that it's very, very focused and can help them get that result. So I know it feels generous to you know just bombard people with information and like, oh, you're gonna get this, you're gonna get this, and I'm gonna teach you this. But if that ultimately takes them off course, then you're really doing them a disservice because they're not getting the result that they paid you for. So if you can believe it, it's actually more helpful if you teach less, not more. All right, I have more where that came from, but first I wanna hear from you. What results do you get your clients? Share in the comments below. All right, the fourth thing that you'll need to do if you want to get your clients results is make sure you're working with the right clients. Yes, everyone who comes to you is not the ideal client for you to work with. There might be a variety of things that you need to be evaluating. So for me, I have lots of different coaching programs and particularly when it comes to my business coaching, I am looking to see where that person is in their business to see if the particular coaching program that they are applying for is a good fit for where they are. There are some coaching programs that I have that are more in depth, more advanced for high level coaching clients and so if I take someone who is a complete beginner, they're not gonna get results because they don't have the things that are necessary. However, if I want to take somebody from start to finish, you know, I might not take somebody who is a complete advanced, like already established business. I might be looking for a more beginner person because again, I know that they're gonna take the information in that program and really run with it. So you wanna look at your programs and you wanna ask yourself, who is the best person that can get the result for this? In addition to that, you also wanna be asking yourself, what is the mindset that the person needs to come with. So yes, in coaching, you're going to be breaking limiting beliefs and helping people, you know, really master their mindset as they go with your program. But there's kind of a base level mindset that someone needs to have, right? They need to have a learner's mindset. They need to be growth oriented. They need to be open. They need to value personal development and growth in various arenas. And so if you have someone who is overly skeptical, who doesn't really value the industry of coaching, who thinks it's all a scam and, you know, doesn't really believe in spending money on anything that's a value who thinks everything should be super cheap and you know it was operating from that mindset by definition that's not going to be a good client for you to work with so you want to ask yourself what is some like baseline criteria that my ideal people need to have in order for me to even get them a result and then make sure that you're only speaking to clients who are that way all right, and the fifth thing you need to do, going along with what we just talked about in the fourth step, is that you need to charge your clients enough to change. Here's the thing, people, when they pay, they pay attention. And so people only value what they pay for and they only value things when they personally have skin in the game. So most people don't realize this, but your price is actually a part of your coaching. Your price is part of the accountability that's gonna hold people together. In fact, I was just thinking about one of the comments that I received from one of our students inside of my program, The Next Big Name, and she was saying how grateful she was because she had gone through a lesson and as she was starting the lesson, she was tempted to be like, oh, I think I know this, you know, I think I've done this before I'm gonna like kind of fast forward and skip through this lesson. 
But then she caught herself and she said, you know what? I didn't pay all this money to be a part of this program and not do the lesson as instructed. So she went back and did the lesson as instructed and took it seriously. And she said she was in tears after she did that activity because even though on the surface, she thought it was something that she had done before, when she had actually got into it, she realized she had never done it at that depth. And so many things about her business, her brand, her core really emerged that she never would have had access to had she not done the program as designed. So this is what I'm saying. Your pricing is a accountability mechanism that really holds your client to the transformation that they said that they want from you. If your client does not pay enough for the transformation that you're offering, don't be surprised when they're not showing up to calls, when they're not taking things seriously, when they're not doing their homework and they're just kind of like, oh, they can take it or leave it because it didn't really cost them anything. And so if they have that type of attitude, then obviously they're not gonna get the result because they're not showing up and they're not taking it seriously. So you need to charge your clients enough to change and understand that when you charge appropriately, you actually do them a service. When you charge too low, you do them a disservice because you make it all the more easy for them to not take seriously and to not be held accountable to the transformation that they ultimately came to you with. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you're going to love my Nail Your Niche Challenge. It's a free five-day challenge where I walk you through the process of absolutely nailing your niche so that you can help get your clients that result that they are looking for. And so if you've struggled with coming up with a specific result, it could be because you're not clear on your niche. Maybe you're not clear on the type of clients that you should be serving, or maybe your niche is somewhat vague. So I'm actually doing this Nail Your Niche Challenge as an experiment. I cannot say how much longer I will be doing it for free. I'm thinking about experimenting with I'm charging for it in the future. So as of this recording, if you click the link and you see that it's free, sign up right away and you can participate in the five days and nail your niche after five days by clicking the link below. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. If you loved it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you can't wait to my next video, make sure that you are subscribed to my podcast, The Courtney Sanders Show, on both iTunes and Spotify. And if you can't wait to my next podcast or my next video, make sure that you are following me on Instagram. It's Courtney L. Sanders. I only have one account, right? So Instagram has an issue right now where there's all these spammers trying to replicate various accounts. Unfortunately, that is happening to me. So if someone reaches out to you and my name is misspelled, I will never misspell my own name. I only have one account and it's Courtney L. Sanders. So follow me there and you can see what I post daily as well as the behind the scenes of my life on my stories. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.